and welcome to Tag Talk. Tag Talk is an opportunity to share with the field a little bit more about what's in the Adjutant General Directorate. I'm the 62nd Adjutant General, Brigadier General Hope Brampy. Thank you for joining us today. Last time on Tag Talk, we talked a little bit about the NCO Evaluation Boards and a lot of the changes. And so today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about what's in the DA Secretariat and the changes to the officer boards. Uh, today, my guest is Lieutenant Colonel Rapinati, Chief DA Secretariat. Can you introduce yourself? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. As the tag said, name is Dre Rapinati. I've been Chief of DA Secretariat of Army Selection Boards for about a year. Uh, haven't got fired yet, uh, so I have about another year left. Uh, prior to this, I was the commander at the 120th AG Battalion Reception down at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And then prior to that, I was the J-1 Director at Special Operations Command Europe at the hardship location of Stuttgart, Germany. Wow, that sounds tough. So um, today I thought what we'd do is just kind of a short question and answer period. And uh, that way we can share with the field what's changed with the officer boards and where they can go for more information. And as always, if you want to check out the Adjutant General Directorate, you can go to the Human Resources website and uh, check out Adjutant General Directorate. You'll see seven different divisions and the DA Secretariat is actually under the Evaluations and Selections and Promotions Division. So with that, we'll get started. So um, I drew out, I tried to find out the hardest questions. So yes, it, it might seem more of a test, but you know, really I was looking at the changes in the officer boards and the DA has been doing adverse screening for some of our boards for some time now. So what has changed? Yes, ma'am, you're absolutely correct. Um, the Army has been doing adverse screening since 2015. So what has changed is when the adverse information is going to be seen by the board members. Mm. So the way it's going to work now is that the adverse screening will occur, and then the adverse information to include documents in the restricted file are going to be seen during the Promotion Selection Board, or PSB, uh, this is really for majors and above, for the active component, and colonels on the reserve side. Mm. Now, post-board screening will still continue. Uh, that's really for anyone in the grades of 08 and below, so that's basically everybody, and that's also for CSL boards. Wow, so not just uh, promotion boards. But um, when you talked about adverse information, um, you know, frankly, I get a little bit confused on the difference between what's derogatory and what's adverse information. So how is the Army defining that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we use it interchangeably, actually. We confuse it. Um, the best way to think of it is derog is like a little slice of the adverse umbrella. What I like to do is actually read the definition, the okay. adverse information. I All don't right, want to jam it up. Um, adverse information, it is substantiated adverse finding or conclusion from an officially documented investigation or inquiry or any other credible information or adverse in nature. To be credible, the information must be resolved and supported by a preponderance of evidence. To be adverse, the information must be derogatory, unfavorable, or a nature that reflects unacceptable conduct, integrity, or judgment on part of the individual. So, derog, small slice of adverse. Adverse is really unfavorable and substantiated finding in an investigation or inquiry. Got it. So, but I mean, there could be credible derogatory information that may seem kind of minor to me. So for instance, you know, I don't want to put it out there, but I mean, if I've had a speeding ticket before, that's credible derogatory information. Is that going to be seen by the board? Yes, ma'am. So some, some things do not rise to the level of adverse. So there's a couple things out there. You have minor traffic offenses that you may not have gone to court for. That does not, that's not considered adverse. Other minor infractions, for example, that did have an investigation, mm -hmm. but nothing substantiated came out of it. So sometimes the chain of command will give you a letter of concern, letter of reprimand. Local GOMARs are a favorite. Also, ma'am, you have information that was previously seen by the Senate uh, prior to an officer's appointment and information that is, is older than 10 years um, unless punishable by one year confinement. So a lot of questions come up about 
When does that 10-year mark start? Um, is it the date of the incident or is it the date of the substantiated finding? It's the latter. So when the investigation is complete and the substantiated finding is done, that's the date that we go off of for 10 years back. Got it. You know, you mentioned uh, local GOMAR, and so nice. that should get uh, people's attention. You know, before a local GOMAR, it's supposed to kind of give you a warning, and uh, hopefully it goes away. Is there potential for local GOMARs to be seen by the board now? Depends on where it's filed, ma'am. So a locally filed GOMAR should not be in an officer's record. However, if the chain of command decides to file it in their permanent record, it will, get, it will be seen by the board. So mm -hmm. the key takeaway, some food for thought for future battalion commanders, brigade commanders, and legal advisors is that you have to really think about how you're going to file that local GOMAR. Um, is it a rehabilitative tool that uh, once that implies locally filed, or has the officer met their potential and it needs to be filed permanently? So a lot of folks need to really think about when they make that recommendation to their CG where they want that GOMAR to be filed. Right, and I would, uh, you know, recommend if I was advising a commander right now, I would say, you know, make sure that you're using escalation of force. Have you done in-writing counseling? Um, have you tried other type of uh, reform, mm -hmm. you know, prior to doing that general officer letter? Um, so if I have adverse information, I'm going in front of a promotion board. How do I get notified? So ma'am, we could break this up into two phases, uh, mm -hmm. current execution and future execution. So what we're doing now is the officer will get notified two ways. First, the board milper message that is published by the HRC proponent, that's about 180 days out from convene date. Um, if an officer thinks that they have adverse or derogatory information, in their file, it is imperative that they pay attention to that milper message. Read it thoroughly, understand what the guidelines are. The second notification is when the officer's board file opens, and that's 60 days prior to the convened date. So when that opens, the officer will see the adverse summary, which is one to two pages, as well as the restricted documents, and have an opportunity to submit a rebuttal prior to the board file closing. Eventually, for future execution, what we'd like to do is that once that investigation is complete, we will add that one to two page adverse summary directly into the officer's AMHER or IPERMS file. And so, like we all know that when you submit a document into IPERMS, mm -hmm. there's an automatic email notification. That's the first notification. Second, the officer promotion branch will also receive that as well and notify the officer via email. Got it. So a great reminder for the field and especially the ones and commanders out there uh, tuning in is it's the officer's responsibility to certify their board file. If there's something in their board file that doesn't look correct, that's when they get the chance to highlight it. Uh, but you mentioned they get to submit a rebuttal. So are there any rules on you know length, content, what should be in a rebuttal? What would be your recommendation? So ma'am, there's no length um, given to the length of the rebuttal. The adverse summary will be one to two pages. This is not the officer's chance to re-adjudicate their case, to submit excessive documents, anything like that. The recommendation is that they're clear, uh, concise, and to the point. Um, in DA Secretariat, we actually monitor how fast the board members vote. Really? Um, yes, ma'am. It's about 35 files an hour. So that's about two to three minutes per board file. So what that means is that if you submit a 500-page rebuttal, there's a good chance that that board member is not going to read it in its entirety. So again, I would say clear, concise, and to the point. Yeah, and just to be clear, I mean, obviously, the board members have as much time as they need. Mm -hmm. uh, but just on average, and we have historical average at least the last 20-something years, uh, to your point of it taking two to three minutes. Um, and so although someone might read it, a majority may not, and you may potentially upset the board member rather than, you know, putting them on your side. So you said keep it brief, so maybe one to two pages. Uh, be concise. Own the mistake. And you know what I've heard? Spell check is free. <laughs> 
I mean, <laughs> I've seen some of the fun letters you get, and I would just recommend, you know, spell check is, is free. And so um, we talked about the length, and uh, if you're cleared, though, say, for instance, I'm cleared by a board um, for the adverse information, and now it's time for me to go in front of my next promotion board. Am I going to have to go through this again? So the good news is no, ma'am. Um, so if an officer has adverse action that's seen by the board, mm -hmm. it will not be seen again for subsequent boards, unless the officer is up for Brigadier General. However, um, when the officer opts in for CSL and competes for CSL, it's potential that that adverse information will come up post-board screening. So during CSL boards, we don't show adverse action, as I mentioned earlier, but post-board screening, it could come up again. And again, the Officer Promotion Special Actions Branch here at HRC will notify the officer via email. They'll have a chance to rebuttal. They'll go before something, a special board called a command review board. Got it. And some people might wonder, why is it that it applies to a promotion board and then I was cleared and now I'm going through a command board and I have to, you know, adjudicate it again. So one, promotion boards are by law, so it's statute. And two, command boards are policy. Mm -hmm. And so the That's Army good. can hold it to a different standard. And to be honest, board members looking at a promotion board uh, have a certain level, but they may have a higher level of expectation for those going in front of the command. Um, but you talked about a post board screen. So say I go through a promotion board. Um, while I was in the promotion board, I received adverse information. It wasn't seen by the board or an, uh, an investigation was closed out. What happens when the adverse information becomes available after the board? So you're unfortunately you're not free and clear. So you might have made it to promotion, but you are what, what typically happens is that again, officer promotion branch will continue to screen for flags and adverse information in your file. And that goes all the way up until six months after you pin on your new rank. So if you get a adverse hit, again, it will be summarized in one to two pages. You'll be contacted by the officer uh, promotion branch here. Uh, you will have to go in front of a SSRB, which is a special selection review board. And I would think of it as our, our promotion review boards and our command review boards. They're very similar. Post board screening, get the information, get summarized, you have a chance to re rebut it. And at some point, it will go before a special board here at HRC. All right, great. So you've put out a lot of great information on the changes to the officer boards. Um, but if I wanted to find out more about the DA Secretariat, what happens in a uh, promotion board or the evaluation boards, where would I go for more information? So, ma'am, we do have a website now. We do have the questions and answers for the special boards. I'm not sure if we have quite updated with the SSRBs just yet. Um, we also have the adverse. I know you sent us a recent tag sends with your adverse. Um, but the important thing is, ma'am, is where to send the rebuttal. So that goes to a bunch of our techs down in DA Secretariat. They receive it and they upload it into your file. So that's the important thing. Folks, just be very mindful of that MILPR message because it's got specific instructions on what to do for your adverse information. All right, and if uh, folks in the field have questions, you know, about the board process, um, I would think we'd go out to Human Resources Command, Adjutant mm -hmm. General uh, Directorate, uh, check out Evaluation, Selections, Promotions Board uh, location, and you'll see everything about the DA Secretariat. Um, and at the end of the day, you can email one of us. And uh, I just want to say thanks a lot for uh, coming on. And I think um, whenever we can be myth busters <laughs> and uh, present the facts, you know, because we're here for the field. Uh, we work for uh, the officers and soldiers in the field, and we look forward to hearing from you. So check us out, the Adjutant General Director at Human Resources Command. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.